It's uh, it's me, Anya Devine. I'm doing a very quick sketch of a fuchsia here, and I've not got my um, microphone or anything or tripod. I just thought it's going to be ten minutes. It's for, for a card for someone, and I thought I'll just record that. Okay, so here's the fuchsia flowers, and uh, this is my um, drawing here. No, it's not. You seen the book? Sorry. <laughs> there you are. Here's a fuchsia, and that's the beginning of my drawing. I've got the paints here. Okay, so see, I'm doing something with it at the top of the top of the fuchsia. There, I'm drawing first. So I'll just put the um, the camera onto my um, paper. My plan is to do a really swift drawing of these. Odds of the fuchsia, and maybe include one open flower, and then I'm aiming to paint it. And uh, my daughters are going to see someone in hospital, and I thought I'd do a little card for her. But they're getting picked up shortly, so I want to do it really quickly. And I know she likes fuchsia. Um, they're actually a great flower to, to draw and paint, they've got a good clear shape to them. There's another video of me doing a longer one of fuchsia without drawing first. I'll just be straight in with the paint one day in the kitchen. And then, yeah, I think I'll go down and do this single flower now that's kind of the stem is hidden behind that leaf there so it's kind of flower so i'm going to do um yeah the stem maybe it's hid by the hidden by the leaf i don't know if you can hear me by the time then i had everything that i needed like the paints and everything out here i thought if i go back in now and get the microphone i'd be another half an hour and i missed the whole t the whole thing Oh, that's very, that's very low. Oh, here's the flower. So there's the, there's a few different pieces. If you're wanting to just follow along and do a painting of a fuchsia as I'm talking, you've got to break it down into, so we've got the stem coming in and then the dark little bud at the top, which is about a third the size of this part of the fuchsia. Of course, different fuchsias are different sizes. The wild ones at home are smaller, significantly smaller than these. But these are the ones that my mum planted in the garden. I love, I love the, they're so um, bountiful this year. But they're almost past it now. So this one I picked yesterday, I think may have a little bit of frost damage on it. That's right. Um, okay, so I was talking about this being about the third of the volume of this. And then as you move down, you can kind of just gauge the direction and length of each part of the fuchsia. So this is horizontal, and then this part is the same length, but it's going down the way. And then this is one single direction that way. And then there's just the, the kind of shape of the other petal hiding behind that one. Anything that shows that it's overlapping will increase the feeling of depth. And then this one that comes out the front here. I'm making it less withered looking than it really is. But this is kind of straight, straight down almost here. <clears throat> and then there's the um again the, this this part of the flower is a lot bigger than the wild fuchsia uh, that grow in the hedgerows in Ireland. This part is is normally about a third of the size that this one is here, and it's more purple. Um, but for the purposes of this demonstration, so this this part is about the same volume as this petal here. Uh, and the other side of it is lighter, so I'm using a thinner pencil line to describe the other side of the inner part of the fuchsia and then the inside of that petal and the outside of that petal will show that it's kind of turning gracefully and again we can see the outside of it again here and then the stamen hanging down they're normally quite straight like if you look at this other one here they're quite straight in that one 
This one is a bit more withered. So I'm going to make them straighter in my drawing because I want it not, not to read as being withered. So I'm just going to invent straight stamen. And it's almost, you could almost have a lost and found quality to the, the long uh, stems. And really for just the only identifying thing could be the little darks at the end. Little kind of seedy things, I don't know what they're called. At the end of the stems of the stamen. I'm assuming they're called stamen. Now, there's another bud behind that one, but it's just taking away from the shape of the flower if I put that, that in. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And now I'm going to reach for my paints. See what I've got here. Um, I think I might just use, yeah, alizarin crimson. Some alizarin crimson and cadmium red maybe together. I could miss something of the colour. So just putting some water in. I don't know what paper this is. I just found it in the studio. I think they'll be fine. Oh yeah, it's quite wet. So I'm going to try them. I'm just going to dry the brush on my trousers. It's terrible, isn't it? Dry the brush on my trousers. Why did I wet it again? For God's sake. No, I'll just try it on the tablecloth here. No. Yeah, so I want to kind of soak up some of that. It's really very wet. And bring some more colour in. It doesn't have to be a detailed piece of work. I've got five minutes and I want to do something swift and uh, as I paint I can kind of see what else I want to put in. So I put more of the alizarin in there to describe the shadowy bit. Oh, the petal turns away, the flower turns away from us, away from the light. Um, so all of this side will be a bit darker than the other. to soften this. Oh my goodness, it's taking up so much water. Soften that a little bit and bring it up through the line. I have a line in the centre of it, see. Okay, and now I'm going to bring some colour to the other ones. Just little bits of warmth. And that actually has got some shadow. So I'm going to use some viridian green mixed with the alizarin crimson to make this shadowy colour here. And I think I could use that also down on this one. Some shadow there. And I may as well... Um, oh yeah, I'll bring some of the... I'll bring some of the red colour into this lovely big flower down here. I put the cadmium red in first and actually it's no harm because then when I put the alizarin crimson into it it has a it's, has a kind of a nice bleeding effect that's a bit surprising. So okay, I will bring some more alizarin in right now. Let me see what I mean. Maybe these are more of a pinky red or white than a, than a cadmium red. You know, there's another red in here I got from Jackson's. Oh, look at that. Lovely. See that colour? It's going to say. Maybe include some of that in the bright side of it inner part of the purple one. And the other red is called Jackson's red. That's it there. And that's actually a nice one for the fuchsia. So if you've been following me, you'll know that I'm doing a review on Jackson's watercolours. So it's kind of handy to use them now and then. They're getting a bit precious. Mm. And I don't know how that. I think it's almost finished the video. It's kind of tricky to be honest holding that and painting at the same time. But um, I've just got another few seconds now, so 
maybe before you go, just indicate the soft green of the leaves. Okay, see you next time.